What's up everyone? My name is Miss Derby and today I'm going to show you how to fill out a Florida vacant land contract. Now to start off, I do want to let you know that I am not a licensed realtor. I actually wholesale vacant land to builders. That's what I do and I also teach that method as well. So I'm showing you how you can fill out a Florida vacant land contract in the event you ever want to assign your contract or wholesale them or if you just want to buy some land in Florida and you just want to fill out your own contract. So either or, this is a good method to use. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach this document to the comment section. That way you guys can get access to this seven page Florida vacant land contract for realtors. Um, now you are allowed to use it. Even if you don't have a license, I do this all the time. I've done hundreds and hundreds of these properties and wholesaled them. Now, the first thing you want to do is go to the property appraiser site. I always, always check everything and cross reference it with the property appraiser site. Now, being that I'm in the state of Florida, one of my main markets is Port St. Lucie, which is located in St. Lucie County, Florida. Um, and I do a property search right here, and that's where I start everything off. And everything I put on the contract is going to be backed by the property appraiser site, okay? I don't take the seller's word for anything. I always cross-reference it with the public records. Now, let's just say you're in a, a situation where you don't know the county or whatever, or the property appraiser site website. There is a website called Netter Online. <clears throat> it's a really good um, tool to use. If you are looking to kind of figure out where the property appraiser site is, they cover the entire U.S., which is really cool. So make sure you utilize this tool if you need help with the property appraiser site, Netter Online, okay? All right, I'm going to go to Zillow just to find an example property to do for you all. Now, I'm going to just pick this random one here. I'm just literally choosing something that's on market. I'm not getting this under contract. I don't do on market deals. So this is just for example purposes only. I'm going to copy and paste this property into the property appraiser site so I can pull up all the car details. Now on the property appraiser site, I don't need to put the whole thing in there. I just need to put in the first part of the address. So I'm going to go ahead and do a basic site address search, type that and paste that in. And of course it pops up first thing. So I go to the car, uh, record card and this is all the details on the property. Okay, so those are all the details here on the property. Now what I'm going to do is look at my contract and just literally match and copy paste parts where I need them. So let's go to the first one. Line one, okay, this is the seller's name, obviously, right? So I'm going to put my seller's name here, buyer, which is me, okay? I'm wholesaling this property, so I'm going to sign it, but I still have to put that I am the buyer, Okay. So we were over here to the right, I'm going to go ahead and click on fill and sign. I am using Adobe Acrobat. It is a tool that's like about $15 to $20 a month. Download it to your computer. I don't use the online version. I use the only the one that I can download to my computer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put the seller's name. Now I literally copy and paste everything. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. Like I don't change anything. I may make it a little bit bigger so that it's you can see it. But other than that, I don't move anything around. Whatever's there as the owner, I put it there. Buyer, okay, I'm going to just put um, my business, which is Laroc Capital Group, okay? I'm going to put that right here. And then as far as the address, I'm going to put the property address that I'm interested in wholesaling. So um, it's down here, the site address. Hold on, I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. So the site address is up here, but on the contracts, I like to put the full um, the full address, so city and zip code. So I'm gonna go back to, to my ad here on Zillow and copy and paste the full address. Now, in the event you don't have a Zillow ad, just copy this and put it in Google and Google will always produce the full um, address for you. So let me go ahead and paste the address. Make it a little bit bigger so we can all see what address this is. The legal description goes on the next line, okay? So the legal description is always in the property appraiser site. As you can see right here, I just need a copy and paste, okay? So I'm pasting the legal description. I can drop it here if I want to, but just make sure everything's clean and on the line. I have such a big pet peeve when my students try to send me contracts and things are just all over the place. In between lines, it just doesn't look professional. So you always want to make sure at least doing things clean and professionally, right? So the next thing you want to fill out is the county. So I'm going to go ahead and put St. Lucie. 
St. Lucie County. Um, now, I don't fill out the section, all this. You don't have to fill everything out, just the key details. So St. Lucie County. And then the next thing I fill out is section two of the contract, which is the purchase price. So purchase price is going to be dependent on what you guys agree on. So let's just say I agree on the asking price of $145,000, which I would never pay in Port St. Lucie, by the way. Absolutely not. That is super overpriced. But for the contracts, I always, always put, you know, the cents, the commas, everything super clean. I don't want to leave anybody in the dark as to what is going on. Now, for the um, title company, this is where you would put title company information now, if you don't have a title company as of yet because you're doing what I do, which is wholesaling and you don't have an end buyer yet, then I would just put something or I just put the term TBD, okay, within five business days. It's kind of what I would put. And then that way, when I send the contract to my seller, I'm letting them know, hey, listen, we are, we're going to go ahead and give you the 145 asking. But right now we're waiting on a few bids from our title companies, from different title companies, I should say. Okay, so we're waiting on a few bids from different title companies, and we're just going to see who can give us the best closing rates, closing cost rates, and close the quickest since we are covering all closing costs. Okay, so I do wholesale, so we cover closing costs typically. So those are incentives that we give to the buy to the seller to work with us. Okay, so I'm just going to put TBD on there. Um, just make sure you let the seller know in advance that you're going to put that on there, so they're not like having red flags about seeing TBD. Okay. But if you already know who you're going to work with as far as title, just insert all the information here. Okay. Contact persons, the closing agent, address, phone, email, the name of the title company will go on top. So the next thing I do is right here. So I check this box, always check it. So this is saying that the initial deposit, so this is talking about escrow, okay. Putting money in escrow or the EMD earnest money deposit. Okay. So I always check this box and it says will be delivered to escrow agent within, and I always put five to seven days. I only put in three days because like I said, I do wholesale and because I do that, I do shop it for a little bit and try to see which buyer I can, you know, bring in to take over the contract for me. So I do five to seven days to give myself time to find a buyer and still deposit escrow in a timely manner. Okay. So I typically do 500. That's our standard with land. $500 is a great number. Now, if you are not in a position to put 500, put a lower amount. Okay. Whatever works best for you. Now, the next thing I do is looking at this purchase price of 145 subtracted by 500 is the number you're going to put right here. So 145 minus, um, 500 is 144, 500. Okay. 144,500 with the cents. Okay, I always put the period dot, I mean dots zero, zero. Always do that. So that things are super clean and um, organized. Okay. Now I don't fill any of this out. I skip all this. Time for acceptance. This is important for a seller who's kind of on the fence of working with you or wants to get other offers from some other, other buyers. I always put the time for acceptance on there. So I will say like, um, uh, unless this offer is signed by seller and buyer and an executed copy delivered to all parties on or before. So they have to, they have to accept this offer by, um, 5 PM, um, Eastern standard time. Okay. On 0501, 2023. So as an example, so like they have till 5 PM Eastern standard time to accept this offer or not. So I like to put a time and a date essentially. Okay. You don't have to do that. I don't always do that. I only do it for sellers who are kind of on the fence because I don't want to give you this offer for you to walk around with it for months and expect the same price. Like, no, things are changing in the market so much that I can't give you this offer for a long time. So we only have till this time to accept. Next thing, closing date. Now, closing date, I'm super big on. I used to always put like an exact date. I don't do that no more. So this transaction will close on or before... 60 days of signing. Okay. So I put on or before always on or before, because we never know when things happen where the seller, the title company gets done early. The builder wants to close sooner so we can put on or before. And then I don't put a date anymore as far as like 
May 10th, 2023. No. I put on or before in certain dates. So like 30 days of signing, 20 days, 60 days, 90 days. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want to be like, let's just say I send it to the seller and they take like two days to sign. Well, they just cut into two. They just cut in to two days of this signing period. Right. So I don't put the date anymore. I put on or before 60 days of signing. So once you sign, six, the 60 day um, timer starts. Okay. So always put that on or before. I'm telling you, it saves so much hassle when it comes to trying to figure out closing dates. Okay. So that's that. Always sign. I'm sorry, not sign. Initial the bottom, seller initials the bottom. Now there's two spots here one here and one here. One here and one here. Now these two spots are not for two letters. One initial for one buyer goes here and another buyer goes here. I have the LLC under my LLC and it's only just me solely. So I don't need to have two people. It's just me, right? So I'm only going to put my initials right here and that's it. Make it a little smaller. Boom, my initials. If I had two people on the LLC, me and another person, I put their um, initials here. Now let's just say it's a seller, right? Two sellers, like a husband and wife. Let's just say it's Valerie uh, Johnson and Mitchell Johnson. That's where you would put the initials. So it'd be two different initials. If there's only one seller, <clears throat> take off the person and you don't you don't have to put two people there, right? If it's only one person. If there's four people, okay, um, Mike Johnson, Steve Johnson, Larry Johnson, you can put all of them and just kind of pile them under and however many initials you need, okay? And make sure all of them are on the deed, obviously, right? So this is an example as far as signing because I've seen people put things like weird, like they'll literally put like Valerie Johnson, no. Okay, it's one initial per space. All right, always leave that blank. Seller has to do it. You don't do that for them. Okay, put your own initials and let them do their own. The next one, next page. Um, I do, like I said, wholesale. So we do cash deals only. So I'm going to check this box. Buyer will pay cash for the property with no financing. Okay, this section is for financing. We're not financing. So you would fill it out if you are doing financing, but I'm not. Okay, this is key and super important. If you are wholesaling these lots or wholesaling land, make sure you assign these contracts. So right here where it says may assign but not be released from liability under this contract is a box you should select. May not assign this contract. You cannot wholesale this if this is checked or assign it, right? And then the top one says may assign and thereby be released from liability of this contract. This is a red flag. If I if someone's bringing me a contract as far as like them buying land from me or buying my land, I would be like, why wouldn't you, I don't, I don't want you to be released. Like this is a protection thing. So as far as checking the box, make sure you do this one. It just looks better for the seller because if anything were to happen, you would not be released from liability and you have to withhold the contracts, okay? I do it that way because I always back out within my inspection period, so it doesn't really matter. But make sure you do that so that way there's not red flags. If you feel like being bold and doing this one, so so I'll be it. You can do whatever you want, right? All right, number seven, special warranty deed, sagittary warranty deed, um, quick claim deed. There's a bunch of different kinds of deeds. Now, in order for a, a builder to purchase a property and build on it, he has to have a, a warranty deed. So this is the one we always select. My builder always wants us to do a statutory warranty deed, not a special warranty deed, okay? And never quick claim properties to builders. They're not going to buy it, okay? There's liens and stuff that could be potentially attached. So only warranty deeds. Warranty, de warranty deeds guarantees that title is clean and there's no encumbrances attached to the property and title is clean, okay? The next thing is title evidence, okay? Buyer is covering closing costs 99% of the time, right? Whoever chooses a title company pays closing costs. So builders always own their title companies for the most part or partner with one. So we cover closing costs, okay? I always put that there. I skip the rest of the stuff and make sure you're initialing your name 
or you're initialing the bottom, right? So I skipped this one. Let me do this. So I'm going to put my initials. Boom. The next page states um, title examination. We don't, I don't touch any of this. I leave this alone. The part I care about is right here. This is the most important part of the contract for land. Now, if you are wholesaling land or doing anything with land, you have to have an inspection period. Otherwise, other uh, another word for that is your feasibility study. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that. Okay, we have to have a feasibility study. This is when the buyer does all of their testing, soil, inspection, everything that an environmentalist goes out and just ensures the property has no issues like wetlands, endangered species, things like that which is extremely common in Port St. Lucie and in Florida in general, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So buyer's expense, um, I always put 45 days, 60 days, whatever, but standard is 30, okay? The standard Florida contract should give you about a 30-day inspection to ensure that the property is free and clear with no physical issues, okay? So if you want to leave it blank, you can, or you can type in 40 you can type in whatever you want. I'm going to leave it blank because that's whatever. I can leave it at that. It's going to need 30 days. No feasibility study. You never want to check that because that means if you were not to want to purchase the property, you still would have, to, you would lose your earnest money deposit. Okay. So leave that. Um, skip all this, skip all this. This is just talking about government uh, regulations, flood zonings, just terms that are standard to land, okay? Now, this is another important section here, which is closing costs. You don't have to do anything here, but just kind of notice this. Seller's closing costs. When a builder comes up to you and says, hey, I want to buy your land and I'm going to cover all closing costs. These are the costs they're talking about down here. So they're covering taxes and recording fees on notes and mortgages, recording fees on the deed, loan expenses, if any, right? Title evidence, lender um, title policy details, inspection survey insurance that's what they're covering that's all close that's closing costs that's the majority of closing costs now the seller has to cover closing costs if there is any costs for them to cover so taxes if the seller owes taxes on their property they got to pay that like you're not covering the back taxes unless you're taking over a property at a steal they got to cover their taxes if they owe taxes Recording fees for documents needing to cure title. So if there's anything attached to the property, like a lien, the recording fees for the documents needed to cure title, they have to pay that. Like, I'm not paying your liens. Like, that's your stuff. And then, obviously, title evidence, if applicable. It's not applicable, right? The buyer's going to be covering those costs. So just something to notice. So when a seller asks, like, well, what are what am I going to cover? You don't cover anything unless you have deeds or, um, I'm sorry, liens or back taxes basically. Prorations. Okay. So taxes and stuff like that. It's prorated taxes, special assessments by public body. Um, I just skip all this. And then also initial, right? I want to make sure I'm initialing everything. All right. I skip all this. this is all just terms, y'all. Just terms to protect the buyer and seller. Okay. Just standard terms. Nothing special, nothing for you to fill out. <clears throat> same thing goes here just a bunch of terms something i will want you to notice here is section 19 if you are a licensed realtor broker or whatever you must fill out your information here okay so if this is on the mls your the seller's broker here the buyer's broker there whatever fill this out if you're working with realtors have them fill this out okay initial if you are doing an off-market deal like I am, skip it. It doesn't need to be filled out. This is super important, the last page. So the last page should always have the parcel ID number, okay? So this is the parcel ID number. If we go to the property appraiser site, the parcel ID number is going to be right here. So I'm going to copy and go back and paste it. Parcel ID number should always be there so that way everyone knows what's going on as far as which property. The parcel ID number acts as the social for the property, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and type in these terms. This is super important to write this in just to protect all parties, right? So this is like already saved because I use it so much. So this states here, buyer agrees to cover all closing costs 
minus any liens or back taxes. Seller agrees to transfer free and clear marketable title to buyer. So what does this mean? I'm covering closing costs. I'm just letting you know. But I'm not covering, that's why it says minus, minus any back taxes or liens. But the seller has to agree to transfer free and clear marketable title to buyer. So baby, like I don't want any, I don't want any issues on this property. I don't want any liens. I don't want any, anything attached. I need it free and clear and I need it marketable to me, right? So seller agrees to transfer free and clear marketable title to buyer. Always put that to protect yourself. Now, as you can see, the additional terms has a lot of space. You can put whatever in the world your whole heart desires, whatever you and the seller agree on, you guys can put it in these terms, okay? Then the last part is always initial. A lot of people forget to initial the bottom. So make sure you initial um, and then also make sure you sign. Okay. So you have to make sure you're signing. So I always sign my name right at the top and then I print my name under the bottom. Exactly how it says to do, you just copy and do. Okay. So today I'm going to just put May 1st. 2020, 2023. Okay. Now if there's two buyers, like I said, two people on my LLC, which is me and somebody else. I'll put their, L their names here. Date, right? The address should go right here. So I'm going to just put 123 Main Street as an example. Um, city, state, zip. And the number would be 123. An example at symbol.com. So I put my phone number, my email, my business um, address. Okay, I don't like putting my personal stuff on there. Put your business stuff up here. Okay. And the seller's address. So the seller's mailing address should go here. Okay. Remember, they sign and date their own stuff. You do not print their name here for them. They do that on their own. I'm going to make that, make that very clear. So the address should be the one that's on the property appraiser's site. So this one looks like they are in Tamarack, Florida. So I'm going to copy that and paste that address here. Now, always ask the seller, hey, is the address that's, the address that's on the property appraiser site, is that still a good address for you? The one at 7751, whatever. So you just want to make sure you ask those questions so that way you're just not assuming. But for the most part, that should be matching. Like they should always update that. And then their phone number will just be whatever their phone number is. Okay? They should give that to you. And their mailing address is seller at example.com. Okay. So make sure you guys have their email, their phone number. Fill this out. I feel like a lot of people leave this out for whatever reason. Put that in there. And the reason why is because when you need to refer back to getting any information from the seller, the title company can go to the underlying agreement and get that information. Okay. So that's how you fill out a Florida vacant land contract, especially for wholesaling real estate as far as wholesaling land. Um, this is exactly how you would fill that out using the property appraiser site. Hopefully this helped everyone and comment down below if you want more videos like this. Have a good one guys.